Greetings, Alamo Stone. Uh, Cronenbergers have been missing you guys dearly, and um, we have a song we'd like to share with you that uh, we think is a, a great Easter song. It just reminds us about Christ and what an awesome thing he did on the cross for us. So uh, we hope you guys enjoy. This is a song called Living Hope by Phil Wickham, and it has really been blessing us lately, and we hope it blesses you guys too. Ready?
Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Alamo Stone. Uh, this is our Easter service. Thank you for joining us. Uh, before we get started, uh, thank you, Cronenbergers, for, for helping us out with some worship. Uh, it's, it's nice to see your faces and, and hear your voices, so thank you to the Cronenbergers. Uh, tonight, we'll just get started with a couple of announcements. Uh, as you know, uh, we're meeting virtually for now, and for the at least for the next few weeks. Uh, please check our Facebook page and YouTube for updates. That's the easiest way to stay connected. Uh, that's the, we'll be pushing out updates through there. Uh, <clears throat> after tonight's stream, we'll be having a couple of Zoom meetings. Uh, Dave will be leading the, the adults uh, in some fellowship. And uh, when I set this up, the kids' Zoom was TBD. So uh, if Dave can uh, maybe send out an email or post some uh, uh, connection for the, the Zoom, the kids' Zoom hangout. Uh, this coming Wednesday, please join us for a prayer fellowship uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, it's at 7.15. The whole family is welcome. Uh, if you're like our house, uh, we've got a five-year-old and a two-year-old, and they like to make their voices heard. Uh, just, just be handy with the mute button, and uh, you know the whole family is welcome. Uh, it's been really cool to see uh, the Lord working uh, both in our, our personal problems and, then, uh, and as well as healing our nation. And so please join us, uh, whatever uh, anxieties or cares that you have, we want to lift each other up in prayer, and we also want to lift up our nation in prayer and ask the Lord for healing. Uh, this is Almost Stone's COVID-19 response. Again, we encourage you to, to not be panicked, but to be prudent and prayerful in, in whatever you're facing uh, day to day. Uh, we're not just sheltering in our homes and streaming Netflix, but rather we're looking for opportunities to serve and to share what we have with others. So we're not just sheltering, but looking to serve and share. And all of this is under the umbrella of we want to honor the Lord uh, by honoring uh, what our government is asking us to do, as well as honoring uh, others around us. So we want to uh, social distance to honor the government, as well as honor uh, uh, the most vulnerable, pe vulnerable people uh, who could be affected by the virus. And lastly, Throughout all of this difficulty, we want to maintain an attitude of thankfulness and not ungratefulness. Uh, I'm sure everybody's got an example. You see it in the news or social media of ungratefulness, right? We want to be, when people look back at this crisis and think about the church, we want to be thinking of uh, they were prudent and prayerful. They honored the government and others. They were serving and sharing, and they had an attitude of thankfulness, even in the midst of difficulty. So... Uh, that's what we're striving for. Uh, here's some links uh, if you uh, for some COVID-19 resources, uh, White House stuff, uh, City of San Antonio, as well as the CDC. Uh, so I uh, hope you can join me just in here in a couple minutes. Uh, we just want to take some time to pray for and also to say thank you. 
uh, for all the essential workers who are doing things to serve us, as well as their families. Uh, those in the medical community, at grocery stores, uh, all the logistics and transportation, food prep and delivery. Uh, first of all, thank you for what you're doing. And if you're a family member, uh, thank you as well uh, for how you're supporting uh, your essential worker and what they're doing to serve us. Um, as well as our, our government leaders at, at all levels, we want to say thank you for what you're doing. And I uh, hope you can join me as we take a moment to, to pray for all these folks. So please uh, pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you that we, uh, even in the midst of this difficulty and all everything going on, uh, there are still ways for us to gather. There are still ways for us to uh, uh, read your word and to worship together and uh, to fellowship, Lord. We thank you for that. Uh, Lord, uh, especially at this time, we ask that you would be with all uh, the essential workers that are working to, to serve us. Lord, I pray that you would just uh, have your hand upon them, protect them. Uh, Lord, protect their families. Uh, Lord, give them strength as they serve us. Lord, give their leaders uh, clarity on policy. Lord, if there are any of these folks who are just downcast and uh, just feel defeated, Lord, I pray that you would just pick them up, comfort them. Uh, Lord, put someone in their path who can encourage them uh, and help, uh, and help uh, lift them up. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, similar things for our government leaders as well, Lord. We pray that you would be in their midst, or that you would give them uh, wisdom and understanding in how to, to handle this crisis. Lord, we pray that you would be honored, uh, even in the midst of our leadership, Lord. Uh, we pray that you would uh, just be moving. Uh, Lord, in, in all of these uh, in all of these folks' lives, Lord, I pray that you would be glorified. Uh, Lord, where there are people that don't know you, Lord, I pray you would bring salvation. Uh, Lord, for those that do know you, I pray you would just bring a, a deeper and closer walk. Lord, we thank you for these folks, and uh, we just lift them up to you and pray that you would uh, take care of them and guide them. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, so, uh, Tonight we're going to continue our study in 1 John, and uh, this is our, our Easter uh, service and celebration, and uh, it, it just lined up beautifully. What we're going to talk about tonight is just at the core of the gospel, uh, not just for the salvation, but for our sanctification. So I, I'm excited. Uh, again, if you haven't heard already, this is one of my favorite books. I love this book. Um, you know, if you're looking for something to listen to, uh, there's a link in the description. You can listen to the whole book of 1 John and like... 15 or 16 minutes. Uh, it's really one of my favorite books. Um, one of the most encouraging things uh, you can listen to. Uh, so just real quick, uh, this is written by John the Disciple, not John the Baptist, not John Mark, but John the Disciple. Uh, when he's writing this, he's a very old man, probably in his 90s. Uh, so he's the, one of the last few remaining witnesses uh, of the events of the life of Christ. So it's a great point of transition for the church. And John is really writing to address this new generation and really build them up in their faith and really try to keep them from any false doctrine. Uh, just real quick, some of the, the signs that John was a witness to, right? We have the seven signs recorded in, in John's gospel. Uh, we looked at those a few weeks ago. And we're just trying to keep in mind what, what John saw. Right? He saw some of the great works of God. Uh, and these are just some more of the major events in the life of Jesus that John was a witness to. Uh, in particular, uh, he was a witness at uh, Jesus' death, right? If you remember, uh, when Jesus is on the cross, uh, Mary, his mother, is there, and John is also there, right? And John is the one that Jesus says, uh, essentially, John, take care of my mom. And Mary lives in, with John at that point. So it, he's had a remarkable life. John has had this remarkable life. And he's writing to encourage us uh, in our walk with the Lord. And uh, we can't talk about John as a witness to the crucifixion without, he was a witness to the empty tomb. Uh, if you remember, uh, he and Peter had the foot race, and John uh, looked in and saw the empty tomb. So John is a witness to all of this. And just to remember a couple of things from the past few weeks, right? Uh, why, is, why is John writing? And he, John's great about this. He tells us, right? He is testifying about the events in Jesus' life that he saw. He, he's very descriptive. He says uh, what we have seen, what we have heard, what we have touched. Right? He's very, very descriptive. 
And he's writing to, to testify about these events because he wants us to know the God that we are called to have fellowship with. Right? He wants believers to have fellowship with the Father and fellowship with one another. All right, so he's testifying about who God is and what he has seen. He's, he wants us to have faithful and good fellowship with the Father and with other believers. And also that our joy would be complete, right? Uh, it's, it's very appropriate to talk about joy when we're talking about Easter, right? Uh, and, and also he's talking about uh, fellowship by walking in obedience and then confessing when we do sin. We're going to talk a little bit more about that tonight. If you remember back uh, to chapter 1, verse 7, right? That's the goal we're all striving for, is that faithful fellowship. And how do we get there? It's chapter 1, verse 9, right? When we do mess up, we confess. And that paves the way for that faithful fellowship. All right, so all, we remember all this stuff about John, not to put him on a pedestal, not to worship him. Uh, we just want to kind of have that in mind. Every time you study scripture, you want... As much as you can, you want to know about the author, just to kind of uh, see where they were coming from. So with all that in mind, let's turn to 1 John chapter 2 and read. And hopefully you have an ink and paper Bible. If not, you have an app or you're in a spot where you can, uh, you can read and, and take notes and circle things and put arrows uh, if you write in your Bible. So 1 John chapter 2. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. All right, so hopefully some of these words and these topics are familiar. All right, but let's, let's dive in. Um, little children, right? You're going to hear John use this term a lot, and that kind of plays into the whole idea that uh, this almost feels like, uh, uh, for me, it feels like my dad or my grandpa almost speaking, right? It's, it's not a good idea to read yourself into scripture, right? You want scripture to, to read into you, uh, but it just feels like an, a, an older brother or sister in Christ is, is reading, and he's, there's much affection, right? I hope you can uh, hear the affection that John has. Uh, for these believers and the affection that the Lord has for us, right? He's little children, uh, you know, it's uh, the the Greek is kind of similar to Spanish or in English. You know how you would say uh, you wouldn't just say, "Oh, there's a dog," right? "Oh, there's a puppy," right? It's it's a little dog, right? There's affection, like not that we're cute or anything, but you know, there there's affection there, right? There's affection, a little bit of joy. Right, and uh, it's not the only time John is going to refer to uh, other believers as little children. He does that uh, further down the line in First John, and also in John chapter one. Uh, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Right. So I hope you John's motive for saying these things is rooted in love. It's rooted in affection. Because uh, there's going to be times where John has to tell us some difficult things, right? But he's telling us the truth and in love. So, little children, right? He's talking to uh, believers, children of God. Right, he's giving us another reason that he's writing the book. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. Right, that's, that's a pretty powerful statement, right? John is calling us uh, not to sin, right? And remember where we were just a little bit up in chapter 1, right? We're called to faithful fellowship with God. Right? Remember the key to all that was obedience. And when we do mess up, right, we confess that sin to God and that fellowship is restored. Right? But John is saying, hey, right, that the goal keeps getting higher and higher. Or it doesn't get higher and higher. Like Jesus is that high goal. Right? And we're striving towards that. Right, and uh, 
hopefully instead of viewing sin as an option, right? Sometimes we think, oh, well, just got to sin. Hopefully that thinking doesn't enter your mind, right? Hopefully you start to think about sin instead of, well, it could be fun for a little bit or, uh, you know, all the lies that we tell ourselves. Hopefully we can start reminding ourselves the truth of sin, right? It breaks our fellowship with God. Right? When, we are, when we're tempted to sin, hopefully that enters our minds and that, oh, I really don't want to give up and break my fellowship with God just for that, that fleeting moment. Right? right? And it breaks our fellowship with other believers. Right? We'll talk about that a little bit later. Right? But remember, John is writing, to a, writing this letter uh, so that we may not sin. Right? Uh, I found this quote... Uh, I think it's from Ravi Zacharias. I don't know if he took it from somewhere else, but I've heard this before. Uh, Sin will take you farther than you wanted to go, keep you longer than you wanted to stay, and cost more than you wanted to pay. I think that's a great way uh, to put it. Right? It it takes all those things from us, and then it robs us of fellowship with God. Right? And John is calling us to avoid that, to choose something else, to obey. Right, and so lest we think that we can be sinless, right? If you ever uh, encounter someone teaching that uh, you can be perfect and without sin, uh, just run, run, and and point them back to the scripture and then run, right? Uh, because uh, let's read uh, the next verse there. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Right, so, so our goal is to strive for obedience and to, to forsake sin and leave it behind. But John acknowledges right, that some, we do fail. We mess up. Right, and that we, when we do that, we have to remember we have an advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So we're, we're never, this side of heaven, we're never quite perfect. Right? We still struggle. We're all in need of for our salvation and for our sanctification. We're going to talk a little bit about that. All right, so, so what is an advocate, right? If we, if we hear that word in modern day terms, uh, it's usually uh, in a legal setting. Like, like, I don't know what it is. Like, we love TV shows about uh, courtrooms and courtroom drama and uh, an advocate, right? And it, it, it means just that, right? It's an intercessor a consoler or a comforter. Uh, It could be one who pleads for another's cause before a judge, a counsel for the defense. Right, and so if you picture heaven as almost a divine courtroom, you have God the Father, who's the just and holy judge, right, he can have no part of sin, and yet he has this great love for for his people. So there's God the Father, the just judge, and then there's the accuser, right? That's what the word devil means. It means the accuser. And the accuser is standing there and he's, he's saying things that, well, Kyle's done this, 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 and this. And, and thankfully, right, because I'm in Christ, I have an advocate. I have Jesus. Right? He stands in my defense. Right? He, he pleads on my behalf. Uh, one of my favorite songs, Before the Throne of God Above, right? it talks about this. It says, before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea. A great high priest whose name is love, whoever intercedes for me. Right? That's 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 a beautiful song. My mind goes to it often. Right? If you think about it, it's it's the punishment I've earned versus the punishment taken by Jesus. Right? There's what is what is Christ advocating? We're gonna get to that in a minute. Right? So there's the accuser and the advocate, right? And they are before the just judge. We keep going in John uh, chapter 2, verse 2. He is the propitiation for our sins. Not for our sins only, but also the sins of the whole world. So we're throwing around a lot of big words. Don't be be afraid of the big theological words. We can can discuss them. Right? Propitiation. It's not used a lot in, in the New Testament. Uh, it just means an atoning sacrifice, right? And as we celebrate Easter, right, this is the very core and depths of what, of what Easter is about. 
Right? This harkens back to the Old Testament where priests would offer a sacrifice for the sins of the people. Right? The people would be guilty with their sin and then and God is being just that that sin bears a sacrifice. It needs a sacrifice. Right? So God is a holy and just judge must bring judgment and wrath, right? God can have no part of sin. Right? Right, so, so what, what are these consequences of our sin, right? We know, many of us know, Romans 3.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, right? So our sin, right, it has consequences, right? For the person who's not in Christ, uh, this, this bad news gets worse. As we look at John 3.36, right? Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on him. Right? So there's a, there's a big problem. Our sin has earned us wages, and these wages are death. And the wrath of God remains on him. But, but, right? Jesus Christ is both our advocate and our propitiation. I know we don't use that word a lot, uh, but it's a, it's a deep and beautiful word. He is the propitiation for our sins. Right? The death of Jesus Christ pays the debt of our sins. Right? So it moves us from death to spiritual life. Right? And it removes the wrath of God. Right? A just and good God. Right? He hates sin. He loves us sinners, but he hates sin. Right, the wrath of God is removed, and there's fellowship. Think about that for a minute. Some of us are kind of stuck on number one. Right? Okay, we're saved. We've moved from spiritual death to life. Right? But thinking about the wrath of God has been satisfied. It was poured out on Jesus Christ on the cross. And now there's room for fellowship. We've moved from wrath to fellowship. And I hope you can appreciate that and celebrate that this Easter, that we have moved from spiritual death to life and from wrath to fellowship. This is all because of what Jesus Christ has done, not anything that we've done. Not anything that we've done. All right, so if we go back to that thought of Jesus as our advocate and the propitiation, right, and think about that divine courtroom in heaven, when the devil stands to accuse Kyle of things that he, I've done, my dirty laundry's in the street, Jesus Christ says, no, I died in his place. Right? That sin has been paid for. We've moved from death to life. The wrath is removed. We are free to walk in fellowship with God. So what now? What now? Right? As we finish through verse 3 through verse 6, uh, John is going to say the same thing a couple different ways to help us think through this, this new life, this new process. And how do we have assurance that we are in Christ? Right? That's an, that's an important question. So let's, let's keep reading in verse 3. And by this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Right. Um, if you have a Bible in front of you and you, you write, uh, just circle keep every time you see it. Um, I'm working off of two different things here, uh, but go ahead and just circle keep. Right, as you can see there, um, I don't know that we use the word keep a lot nowadays, um, but uh, if you look at that definition there, it means to be watchful, to be on guard, to keep your eye upon, to attend to carefully, right? So this is an active, ongoing process. This isn't a one-time thing. Like, oh, I, went to, I went to Sunday school and I learned about the Ten Commandments. I'm good. Right? This is a day-by-day -day thing, right? I'm being cautious and aware, right? I know what God is calling me to do, and I'm seeking a way to do it. I know what God is calling me to stay away from, and I'm seeking, I'm watchful, I'm on guard to, to stay away from it. Right? And, and 
as we as we live our lives in Christ, right? We we begin to change. As we as we go through life and begin to keep those commandments and walk in fellowship, and we can look back and say how how things are different, how we've changed. Right? That becomes our assurance of salvation. We'll, we'll talk about this in the next couple of verses. Uh, Paul puts it this way in Ephesians 8, or 5, 8 through 10. For at one time you were in darkness, right? John writes a lot about light and dark. At uh, one time you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Right? So we're saved, right? We've moved from death to life, from wrath to fellowship. And now the new life is searching for, for ways that please the Lord. Right? We're walking as children in the light. We're different. We are changed. Right? We are a new creation. We, we're being sanctified by the word of God. Right, So we, we never get confused and think that our works have saved. Our works are, do not save, but rather they show that we've been saved. Right, uh, Another way to put it is they are not the root, but they are the fruit. Right, It is the work of Christ that is the root. Right, It has saved us, and now we are walking in good works. Now, in verse 4, John offers a, a negative example. Right? John does this a lot. He'll say the same thing uh, over and over, but he'll say it in different ways, kind of anticipating an argument. And so in verse 4, it says, Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep. Right? Remember, keep. It's your watch on guard, keeping your eye upon, right? to attend to carefully. Right? Whoever does not keep his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Right? This is John uh, rebuting, uh, you know, the, the fire insurance gospel. Right? Uh, I said a prayer when I was little, and now I'm saved. I can do whatever I want, and God's grace will cover it. Right? No, that's not how we're to live. No. If you find yourself thinking that, you know, there's, there's a need for a pause. I hope, I pray that no one listening is, is having that, that line of thinking. And if not, uh, please rethink it. All right? If we say we know God and do not keep his commandments, that makes us a liar. And the truth is not in us. All right? And as we, as we move through 5 and 6, right? whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Right, that perfected, right? That's uh, it doesn't mean perfect as we think, right? Right? You see the definition there. It's, it's the thought is that we are complete, accomplished, finished. Right? I, I love these uh, other other definitions uh, from Thayer. To carry through completely. Right as we walk in fellowship with the Lord and seek to obey Him, right when we when we when we fall, we confess it and repent of that and move forward. Right, God is is carrying us through to completion. He is finishing what He started. Right, He's He's adding what we lack. I am very lacking, but God is good in His provision to bring to the end goal. What is the end goal? Remember, it's it's John chapter seven. Right, that we walk in faithful fellowship with him. Right? And how do we get there? It's in keeping his word. It's in obeying. It's in knowing the word of God and doing. Whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfective, perfected. By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way which he walked, right? Our lives should begin to, to align and start to look like, like Jesus' life here on earth, right? We should be concerned about the things he was concerned about, right? Accomplishing his Father's will, doing his Father's work, right? 
loving God with everything we have and loving our neighbors around us. That should be what we're most concerned about. So there, there's two great dangers that a lot of us face. I know I, I fall into these and God graciously brings me out of these, right? But so John has identified uh, this first one, right? We walk in false fellowship because we think we have no sin, right? That's, that's dangerous for the person uh, who hasn't uh, put their faith in the Lord, right? Because that wrath remains on them. And for the person who, who is a believer, who is in Christ, right, it's not good to think that we're perfect, that we, we have no sin. Right? We, we will have a false fellowship with God. It's not a good place to be, that place of pride. Uh, for the person who is, is pride, uh, pride goes before the fall. Right? So there's that first kind of trap, one extreme end. And at the other end is, is number two there. Because of our sin, we just give up on fellowship. It could be with God and with his people. Right? Because of our sin. Right? So we, we mess up. And instead of what? Confessing and trusting in our advocate and the propitiation that God has already accomplished. Instead of trusting in that, I think, ah, just can't go on. Right? And we give up on fellowshipping with God and we give up on fellowshipping with other people. Right? And that's the, uh, that's the other extreme, right? Oh, God couldn't save me. He couldn't bring me through this. Right? And those are two very dangerous ideas that, that John is addressing here. Right? And we have to, to keep right there in the middle. We have to strive towards that obedience. And when we fail, right, we trust in God's goodness that he is our advocate and he has provided the sacrifice to cleanse us from our sins, right? This all goes back to chapter 1, verse 7 and verse 9, right? Verse 1, 7, that's the goal, faithful fellowship, right? When we fail and we sin, we go back to 1, 9, right? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to cleanse us. So both of these, these false ideas here... Um, that have dangerous ideas about our sin and about our Savior. Right? If you find yourself dealing with that first one, right? I don't have any sin. I don't know what, I don't know what this guy's talking about. I don't have any sin. Right? When we diminish our sin, we diminish our Savior and what he has accomplished, what he's done. When we don't take sin seriously, we don't take God seriously. Right? And we, we begin to elevate ourselves and to demote God. That's not a good place to be. Right? If we say we have no sin, we make God a liar. And the truth is not in us. So I, I hope you're not there tonight. Right? And at the other end of the spectrum, right? because of our sin, we give up on fellowship. Right? That's, that's dangerous too. Right? When we stop abiding, we stop growing. Apart from God, we can do nothing. We also diminish the sacrifice of Jesus by saying it's not enough. Right? Oh God, something's not working. Right? I'm just, I'm just not going to try to fellowship anymore. Right? Right? And if, if, if you're there, right? Could I encourage you to draw near to the Lord? to trust in his grace, to trust in his goodness. It is enough. Confess, repent, and come back to fellowship with the Father and fellowship with the people of God. So we have these two great dangers that we're, we're trying to, to avoid, the, to being blown back and forth between, right? The pride of I have no sin and the false pride of, well, I'm, I'm too great of a sinner. And that, that thinking leads us. Both of these break fellowship. Right? And, and as you examine your own heart, which one stands out to you most? Right? And uh, these two were very cutting uh, for me. Uh, I, I definitely experienced both. But for me, uh, the second one there, I, I find myself there more. I get really frustrated with myself. Oh, I messed up. 
like almost like I need to punish myself before I, so I can prove uh, to God how pious I am, I guess. And, and God's been very much convicting me of that, right? Confess, repent, come back to that fellowship. Forsake that sin, agree that sin is sin and come back and walk in, in faithful fellowship with the Lord. Right, so, so our prayer for each person listening is that they would draw near to the Lord. They would have faithful fellowship with the living God. Right, that these difficult days wouldn't drive you away from God, but closer to Him. That we would each confess our sin and experience His forgiveness and cleansing. So as we celebrate Easter, right, it's, it's not about rabbit eggs and baskets and all that stuff. I'm not here to beat up on you if you have an egg hunt tomorrow and all that, right? Right. But Easter is about celebrating the gospel, right? It's, it's this, the follow-up to Christmas, right? That little baby boy born at Christmas, right? He grew up into a man, and he died in our place. He paid a penalty that we earned, right? We talked about that earlier. Right, the wages of my sin was death, and the wrath of God was on me. And because of the work of Jesus Christ, I have moved from death to life, from wrath to fellowship. Right, I hope you can take a moment and just think about that. And thank and praise God. Right, if, if you're listening and you've never believed in Jesus, would, would you let today be that day? Would you trust that he is good and faithful? That he can pay the penalty for all your sin and move from death to life. That the wrath of God could be satisfied. We can now be called a friend and have fellowship with God. So, let's read, let's read our passage again. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. By this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way which he walked. So I hope we, we celebrate Easter, right? You can come back to the core of Easter. Right? It's, yes, it's that Jesus Christ died to bring us life, but it's this new life that we walk in. He hasn't left us to, to wander in deeds of darkness, but to, to move to the light, to leave those deeds of darkness behind and walk in his good way. So I, I thank you for joining us and, and spending some time with us. Uh, we'll be live streaming again next week. Uh, please stay updated by following on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, and we'll be closing with a song. And uh, uh, this is a song uh, I found on online this week. And it's not a new song, but it's not an old song. Uh, it's like five or six years old. And it just it just puts into words the things we've been talking about tonight. Right? That we have moved, for those of us in Christ, we've moved from life, we've moved from death to life. We've moved from wrath to fellowship. And so uh, I hope you can take some time and listen in on this song. Uh, afterwards, we'll be having our Zoom fellowship and hang out. And uh, I hope to see you again next week. Uh, we love you and uh, happy Easter. He is risen. The mystery of the cross
Your blood. 